Hi, I'm Rahul Gulari and I hate data science at age. I'll be talking about our machine learning capabilities and how we use machine learning capabilities across our products to fulfill the talent needs of our market customers. In the following section of this video, I'll be talking about the problems we aim to solve and the workings of our machine learning engine and my team's role playing the same. I will also give you a glimpse into what we are looking forward to. We are going to cover these and more in this sequence. So let's begin. As part of our ML engine, we do have multiple capabilities. And in this video, I'll be talking about some of the capabilities like Ace Knowledge Graph, like JD Analysis, how do we understand the jobs, job descriptions, demands, how do we extract information from resumes, and how do we analyze resumes, and how do we help recruiters, hiring managers to find out re relevant candidates and how do we enable candidates to find out more better personalized jobs internally in the company? And the last point I'll be talking about career architecture and the career progression. So before I speak about, I start talking about the machine learning capabilities, let's understand the different problems which companies or organizations are facing. And every company is trying to simplify solve the problem of talent decisions and as part of that company is trying to solve the problem of how can i mobilize the talent internally how can i allocate and optimize resource allocation how can i understand talent better and faster how can i do the candidate discovery and talent discovery faster how can i help how can i upskill and reskills my talents faster and better how can I reduce the skill gaps? At the same time, recruiters and hiring managers have the different problems in the organizations. The, pro the problem which recruiters and hiring managers have are the problems which recruiters and hiring managers have. How can I discover the best ca quality candidate at the right time at the right cost? How can I acquire information about resume faster? How can I find more potential candidate in case of suitable candidate not being available? How can I create better demands on better jobs? How can I do shortlisting faster? How can I proceed and reduce my work across the demands faster? On another side, we do have employees which have problems in the company. Employees want to discover more personalized jobs in the company. Employees want to grow their career inside the company. Employees want to contribute more to the success of the organization. Employees want to be more upskilled and free skills into the latest technologies, skills on the job. How can I be more aligned to the organization? And all these problems also start somewhere with the some kind of HR systems which companies have where they are facing the problems of skill taxonomy, title taxonomy, career architectures, role taxonomies not being up to date with the transformations or changes which are happening across the industries. Today, lots of... Uh, Today, if you look at the skill taxonomy of the multiple companies, you will find out there are lots of skills which are part of the skill taxonomy are obsolete. New skills which are coming into the market and companies working across are not part of the skill taxonomy. Same thing is happening for titles. Same thing is happening for the roles. Since role must have been same, and but responsibilities, task, output, outcome have changed for those roles. Companies doesn't have those information. So these are the four kind of problems which organization is facing and those are the problems we are trying to solve and we aim to solve those problems. And that's why we built our AI engine which is known as HGraph AI engine which is helping customers to simplify talent decisions, helping customers to fulfill the talent needs, reduce the skill gap, help them in the upskilling, reskilling journey and internalize the talent and mobilize the talent 
internally. And that's where like the first important piece and the capability comes into the picture is the edge knowledge graph. Before I speak about edge knowledge graph, let's understand uh, what is knowledge graph. Knowledge graph represents a network of the real world entities. That means it can be objects, events, concepts, people, and illustrate the relationship between them. Knowledge graph acquire the information from documents, images, and many various sources and acquire that information, integrate that information into an ontology and applies a reasoner to derive the new knowledge out of that. And you can see multiple use cases of the knowledge graph across the world. internet is Google. It's very common use case. When you query something on Google, you discover the little bit information coming in the right side or you're getting the answer of the question which you are asking and that is possible because of the power of their knowledge graph and that's where what we have done at edge leveraging the data which we have acquired across last 10 years and knowledge which we have acquired from subject matter experts and data annotators and utilizing that information to build our machine learning engine and, and, and across the capabilities like knowledge graph, JD analysis, resume parser, search and match, career architecture, career progressions, and many other capabilities. The same time, what we have done at Edge is techno as technology was transforming, technology was becoming better. There were lots of innovation happening into the technology landscape and to be very specific into the AI landscape and like deep learning coming into the pictures and the new other uh, state of the art work coming into the pictures. We utilize those advancement in the field of the machine learning and deep learning to build all these ML capabilities as part of our AI engine. And by utilizing all these advancement in the data and the, in, in, in the field of the ML and deep learning to build our knowledge graph what we have based on the jobs and the resumes we have built knowledge about multiple entities entities which are supported as part of our knowledge graph today uh, are certificates companies domains functions geos industries skills titles and understanding of these entities help us to solve multiple problems. Help us to understand the context better about companies, about jobs, about candidates, about the work which they are doing in the certain company at a certain point of time at the certain locations. Because what we have discovered through analysis of the companies, data, jobs, and resumes, companies working across the locations have the different need of the skill sets and the competencies in at the different proficiencies in the different locations. For example, the kind of talent company will have in India at the same role will have a different competency than the ro same role being available in US for the same company. And that's where like these Understanding about entities and all the knowledge across our uh, jobs, resumes, and the other context, helping us to enrich this information and helping us to acquire better context, semantic about different details and data points, and solving the problem. Today, companies are facing the issue of new skills not being available as part of their taxonomies. Our knowledge graph can solve that problem because our knowledge graph is looking at the jobs and resumes real time, acquiring the information from the jobs 24 by 7 and understanding, okay, these are the new skills 
and then same time it's tapping into the knowledge what subject matter experts have in our data net what kind of data we are getting from annotators and when we are feeding that data our knowledge graph is becoming embraced and enhanced which can help customers to tackle that problem it can also help customers and it is helping customer to tackle the problem of data not being available and organization have situations like people have not put their project details people have not put their details in the resume and they have given very basic details about okay i have worked as part of this company into this particular tenure at this particular location and that's the only information which they have and that's where you can utilize the power of our knowledge graph to enrich that information and infer no information like skills okay tell me the kind of skills people will have at this title at this particular company at this particular time at this particular location and many other use cases you can solve for example you can infer the similar titles which may not be part of your taxonomy but you may add them as part of your title taxonomies what are the similar companies what are they looking for these are the information or patterns which you can acquire from our knowledge graph before we jump and look at a use case of our knowledge graph and some specific examples of the knowledge graph let me talk about how did we build it like i said new advancement were happening in the field and are still happening in the field of machine learning and the deep learning we specifically focused on building the in house graph neural networks to acquire this knowledge from the jobs and the resumes and heuristics and the data coming from other sources and that's where that those those advancement in the field of the graph neural network help us to acquire this information where we can say we are able to understand the information than anybody else about these entities and we look at multiple attributes like how a skill is connected to the titles what location what time and then building the relationships and learning the relationship inferring the relationship based on the other context and other patterns and the architecture of deep learning which we have put into the place helping us to understand and acquire this and helping us to build these relationships about these entities and it's not only about learning the pattern from these it's also about okay how do you keep updating your knowledge graph with respect to the new trends happen with the new information based on the way users are acting on our products and users are using our products so that's about uh, the the way of building the knowledge graph now let's jump into the direct one specific few examples of the knowledge graph where you can see the power of the knowledge graph and you can experience it you see it's a, it's a huge graph right now we are showing very limited information to you and you can see very limited information right now but the entities which you do see right now you will see mostly skills in the black color titles in the yellow color uh, pink color into skill categories domains into the purple functions may be green actually and then we do have the multiple other entities which you will not be able to see it right now but if you want you can have a look at that information so let me zoom into the particular entities and that can give you some idea for example you can see and you can have a look at the skill called product management the connected titles are or related titles are senior product managers product managers associate product manager technical product manager and if you look at the related skills product strategy product road map product requirements product design product development are the related skills then you can also tap into what kind of a functions this skill being is used and what kind of domains and the functions are utilizing this and the kind of skill category it belongs to now let's jump into one some let's look at the some specific example about certain skills so i'm just going to try out few skill sets which are trending nowadays and where you can ex experience the knowledge and the patterns across those skill sets 
so you do see the suggestions coming out those are again coming out from our skill taxonomies as part of our knowledge graph so i have selected tensorflow as a skill when i'm going to click on the search it is going to show you very specific information about tensorflow and very limited information and what you do see the information also coming are related skills related titles the skill category which belongs to domains it belongs to a, and functions where this skill is being used actually so let's understand let me zoom and let's understand what all are connected skills so you do see the connected skills are keras natural language processing neural networks pandas attention mechanism anomaly detection machine learning algorithms pytorch open cv scikit-learn image classifications are the some related skills with respect to tensorflow now what kind of related titles deep learning engineer machine learning engineer principal data scientist associate data scientist computer vision engineers spark developer senior data scientist machine learning developer research engineer big data engineer data scientist nlp engineer algorithm engineer image processing engineers have this as a skill now if you look at okay this skill being used across what domains so this skill is being used across computer vision data science gaming medical research digital analytics logistics mining supply chain analytics scientific business intelligence data analytics climate modeling big data computing high performance computations that's where this skill is being used in these domains the kind of function this skill belongs to so this is the information about tensorflow but when you click on the tensorflow you can see a little bit more information about this skill what you can see is some definition about that particular skill then you can see the market trends as we are looking at the jobs and the resumes you will see the market trends of that skill based on the way jobs are being available in the market so as, as as per this graph it is showing tensorflow as a skill in the market is growing and lots of demands and the jobs are asking for that as a skill and what kind of skill is it it is it and this label shows this is a technical skill so this is the information or some metadata which you can see with respect to the skills now another skill which is trending across the market and ar kit because lots of people are talking about the augmented reality virtual reality again let's let's have a look at what kind of skills we do have as related skills as part of ar kit microsoft hololens unity ui ar library you do see 3d game engine sprite kit you see euphoria 2d games blender 3d unity game engine all are the related skills now let's look at the titles which are related to ar kit you do see the unity developer iphone developer ios developer senior ios developer front end developer ui developer full stack developer game developer mean stack developer have this as a skill now let's click on this skill and you do see the trend you see the definition you do see the trend about this particular skills you see it's a technical skills now let's look at one more example where we can see some different kind of skills so i'm just putting print marketing as a skill and you see again let's look at what kind of skill related skills are corporate branding promotional marketing online presence email marketing campaign marketing collateral internal e marketing corporate identity print advertising marketing tools are the related skills of the print marketing the domain where it is used is digital marketing corporate marketing customer relationship digital business development publishing advertising newspaper profile center management sales digital analytics biologicals fmcg are the domain where this this is used a lot the people have this skills are brand manager fashion consultants sales representatives business executive marketing executives 
interior designers marketing coordinators merchandisers and marketing managers are the people who have this as a skill when you click on that you can see okay definition about print marketing you can see the trend with respect to the print marketing in the from the jobs perspective and you can see this is a functional skill so that's about our knowledge graph and the kind of a knowledge which it brings on the table now let me talk about jd analysis it's a machine learning capability which is helping us to understand analyze job descriptions or demands before i jump into how did we build it and the working of the jd analysis see let's talk about how does the jd look like so normally people or any companies use the job description to hire the candidates or and as part of that when they publish the job descriptions into the multiple channels you find out job description containing lots of information normally it start with the title and then huge text and text contains company details text contains the responsibility details text contains the skill details text contains the education details text contains the other branding and other benefits details into the job descriptions and all that information may not make sense but which are very required when you are publishing or putting the job descriptions to align with the candidates and to find out the right candidates which is fitting the need of the organization and the requirement the process happens across multiple stages the first stage is segmenting or splitting that text into the multiple sections like splitting the job description into company sections about responsibility sections skill sections education sections benefit sections and other sections and it's very important to feed the right information right section for finding out the uh, understand the job description better as part of our jd analysis machine learning capability that's the first stage once the first stage happens the second stage is understanding and extracting the information like skills skill experiences certificates skill categories titles educations and all multiple details based on the paragraphs based on the sentences in which they have mentioned and that's where our machine learning system look at the context of that particular sentence it also look at the context of the complete job descriptions and the sections and the paragraph and other neighboring keywords and relationship with respect to other attributes like titles and figure out which one is a skill which one is a title which one is skill category which one is skill experience which one is domain which one is function which one is the industry etc once it has understood about those information like skills the third stage happen is standardizing those entities people write different terminologies when they do publish their jobs online for example if if you look at the pm can be product management pm can be project management people write abbreviations right for example people write k at s which is abbreviation of kubernetes right and people can write a terminology terminology like managing projects as part of their job description and that's where what we do once system has extracted those skills and other entities with entity standardization machine learning capability where it utilize the heuristics the patterns which our neural network has learned based on the data and the patterns which has acquired across the year from domain experts from data annotators from the way proposals are happening from the way rejections short listings uh, offer letters are happening and and this standardization increase your chances to discover candidate faster and helping you to increase the supply visibility because everybody may not write the same terminologies now let me move to the third point 
once you have understood standardized entities it's also very important from skills perspective what is important job description asks for lots of skills it's very important for it's very important to understand what is important what is not important as part of the job to find out discover the relevant candidates and to fulfill the talent needs of the recruiters and the hiring managers and the company and that's why system look at the multiple patterns some of the one of the pattern is how skill is connected to other skills how skill is connected to other skills in the same sentences how skill is connected to other skills in the complete job descriptions and the other sections how that skill is connected to the titles and how that skill is connect what is the sentiment for that skill in that part of the sentence and job description and the sections and other proxy attributes it look at and based on that our machine learning engine identify what are the primary skills of the job and what are the secondary skills of the job and based on that it also infer the skills which you may have not mentioned as part of the job description but it's very important to look for the candidate because they will help you to discover better candidates because the inferred skills again coming based on the power of our knowledge graph and based also the based also on the hiring patterns rejection pattern which it has seen that's how we we are analyzing the job description we are understanding the job description and it is helping recruiters hiring managers to discover candidates employees to fulfill the demand of the job now let me talk about the third capability resume part of which will where we analyze the resume we extract the resume to to solve one of the problem of getting the information faster from the resumes and to solve the problem of search and match to understand the resume better normally resume contains lots of information which candidate has put down as a text to explain details about the work which they are doing about the patents about the educations about the summary about the skill sets which can which is getting utilized by the recruiters or hiring managers to and to to match them with the jobs and which was taking lots of time to understand the resumes and that's where we build the capability called resume parser where we are understanding the resumes very quickly and helping you to get the information in front of you and the way it the process happens is as as uh, as resume also like job description resume also have the multiple sections like summary objective section skill sections your project details project sections your education sections patents publication certificates trainings personal information sections we segment the resume into the multiple sections and that's where our engine does that work by looking at the pattern which it has acquired from the data which we have acquired from data annotators to build that engine so it is going to look at the what is the previous sentence what is the next sentence what is the previous paragraph what is the next paragraph what is the structure what is the style of that particular paragraph or the sentence and where is that information appearing and based on that it it acquired that section and once it has understand the section we try to understand the subsections like project contains multiple subsections project have the project description project responsibilities project skill sets all the details patents have the different details education has the different details and education also has the subsections so what we do using the same engine utilizing the similar kind of process it break down those sections into the multiple subsections for us to understand information at the more granular details 
once we have understood about subsection what we do we try to extract the information we try to extract and details like what is the project name what is the technology used what is the team size what is the description what is the project responsibilities what are the skill sets mentioned in those responsibilities and the descriptions and 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 the customers clients domain tenure the education degree name university name institute name your percentage cgpa and patent name certificate names which institute has given that certificate skill categories skills and all the possible details which we do extract as a entity today we do extract more than 80 fields from the resume by our resume parser and once we have acquired this information from the skill perspective we try to analyze and see what are the primary skills of the candidate what are the secondary skills of the candidate where we look at the similar patterns like i explained in the job description but here as resume contains more better attributes and more rich information we utilize and take the benefit of that informations to better quantify and categorize the skills into the primary and secondary skills which help us to understand candidate better and it looks at the context of again how that skill is connected to that titles or similar titles what is the amount of time which you have spent what kind of domain which you are working as part of the project what kind of responsibility or task which you are doing with those skills what kind of your and in in what are the other projects where you have utilized the same skill sets and how that skill is connected to other skills and when did you last utilize that skills and it looks at all these different patterns based on the information which we have extracted to categorize them into the primary and secondary and that's how we understand resume better we extract the information better and analyze it better to solve multiple problems we also have done the testing of the resume parser with our and we found that our resume outperform competition by 15% thus that shows the kind of effectiveness our resume parser have now let's move to the next capability which is search and match which is very important capability which is helping recruiters hiring managers to fulfill the talent needs and at the same time to discover the candidates obviously what you will see when i'm going to talk about search a match when i'm going to talk about search a match obviously three capabilities are playing important role which are knowledge graph which has the knowledge about all the information jd analysis which is analyzing the jd better understanding the jds to see the need of the recruiters and the users resumes through resume parsers to understand the candidate better but other than these three our search and match engine utilize search and recommendation engine utilize multiple other capabilities to to find out the relevant candidate for a job or for demand and similar kind of process happens when we are recommending the personalized jobs to the candidate as well and and this is all possible because the kind of a data the patterns we have acquired through across the years from the largest customers we do have and from the power of the data which we have acquired through our data annotators and the subject matter experts deep learning in the space of the search and recommendation engine which is helping you to discover the right candidates from the databases which you do which which customer have so now let's understand about how we are helping customers users to 
find out relevant candidates and how do we say okay which one is the relevant candidate which one is not the relevant candidate and how do we enable how do we enable them to discover the relevant candidates and how do we tell them which one is the relevant candidate and which one is not the relevant candidate and what is the process all about i'm going to talk about our search and match process happens as part of our a search and recommendation engine which is helping users to discover the re relevant candidates and the process happens into the four stages first stage is all about understanding the job and enriching the job based on the pattern which we have acquired second process happens as part of the engine is understanding the profile and enriching and inferring details about the profile third stage is figuring out the relevant candidates from the pool of the candidate fourth process and the fourth stage is figuring out fitment of those relevant candidates figuring out the top candidates with respect to that job and then doing the rankings according to that other than the process which we have seen as part of the jd analysis and the resume analysis and the parser system start looking at the job descriptions and iterating through each sentence each keyword each details which has been mentioned as part of the job descriptions and the skills to get the better idea about and to get the better contextual understanding about the jobs as so once it has acquired that information in the complement of the skills and the other pattern which it has acquired as part of the jd analysis then it moves to looking at the resumes now resume like i said obviously we extracted the informations for the different use cases but what we do when we are analyzing the resumes we are looking at the information and we are trying to identify the personal information and before we feed that information to our deep learning capability to find the fitment we mask that personal information because we don't want that information to be creating any kind of a bias to the system to make the decisions so we mask that information and we mask pii information or any other proxy attributes which can create bias and then it again look at the complete job descriptions to understand the way you have utilized the skills the amount of time which you have spent the kind of task which you have done with those skills the output which you have achieved and the possibility of those skills being used and the similar kind of skills being used in other kind of areas in the work and and what kind of work you have done across the projects and possible future about and possibility about what are the other relevant skills which you could have acquired by working on the similar kind of skill sets across the years and looking at this information and then looking at the information from job skills and the resume skills perspective by utilizing the power of our knowledge graph to building a contextual relationships between the job skills and the resume skills to find out and categorize them into the okay what kind of relationships i do see between the job skills and the resume skills and categorizing them into the four categories are very strong contextual similarity low strong very low contextual similarity and strong contextual similarity and the low contextual similarity and these are the some some patterns which i'm talking about here but there are many other patterns which we do utilize to feed into our deep learning capability to find the fitment of those candidates with respect to their jobs that's where all these informations are feed into our 
to find out the fitment criteria of those candidates with respect to them. So that's about search a match and workings around search a match. If I summarize a little bit on that piece, understanding the jobs, understanding the resumes, understanding the skills, understanding the skills of the jobs and the resumes, those are very basic, basic data points which you do require to find out the relevant candidates, but you need to understand how those skills has been used. What your what organization is trying to do with those skills? Does the candidate and what kind of work candidate is doing with those skills? How much time they are spending on those skill sets? What kind of tasks they are doing? What kind of output they are do, uh, working, generating and get achieving? What kind of movement they have done? What kind of domain company which they are working across? When did they last work on those skills? Are they utilizing those skills as part of their recent work, recent projects? Are and, and, and are they collaborating with during that work? Are they doing the integration? Are they doing the implementations? Are they doing the full stack development? Understanding all these details are the additional attribute which will really help and which is helping our engines to recommend you the relevant candidates to and also to make fair decisions and transparent decisions and bias free decisions now let's jump into the last capability which is the career architecture and the career progression Career architecture is a big part of any organization. Where organization and organization build career architectures so they can align the workforce to meet the business needs. It's kind of a blueprint for business to execute the certain strategy to achieve the goals which they do have. Lots of Today, companies are spending lots of time to build the career architectures and by the time they are done, architectures has become obsolete. The new skills has come, new competencies has come, new skills has come. The roles, responsibilities has changed. And because of that, organization are not able to execute the strategy at the scale of, at the speed which they do want. And we have seen the evidence of that during the, we have seen that happening during the COVID. And that's where we built career architectures to solve the problem, to align, map, customer and organizations, career architectures to our career architecture and keeping it up to date and consistent with respect to the trends and the changes which are happening in the market and to help customers to make better talent decisions which can be uh, understanding the skill gaps to achieve resource allocations to to do the upskilling reskilling to do the career progression for the employees and that's where on top of our career architecture we have built our career progression engines because today around 40 to 50 percent of the employees wants to leave the organization because they don't see the kind of career growth they want to achieve they don't have the possibility of that being happening in the organizations and that's why they are leaving the organizations and admissions happening that is one of the important criteria which you do see in the market the second important reason is also about they may be on the they, they may get that career path but they are not able to work on the new skills which are coming across which will help them to be relevant with the time so let's have a look about career architecture how we have built career architectures by collaborating with subject matter experts across the industry who has spent time and who is who has already spent lots of time defining the career architectures for multiple organizations.
and then working with the data annotators to acquire that information to build our career architecture machine learning engine on that data and on that career architectures which can map customer demands to customer career architecture candidates employees to our career architectures and the role and then help us to even achieve the goal of better resource allocations helping you to find out the relevant candidate at the right cost as well what you do see as part of the our career architectures we do have a framework like you do see the industry then as part of this industry what you do see is function and under the so what you do see as part of our career architecture framework are job family then you do have functions and the role belonging to those functions and then you do see the role definitions function competencies behavioral competencies and the proficiencies attached to those competencies these are the attributes which are available as part of our career architecture now let's look at how does our career architecture look like so you do see it industry and in it industry we do have the these many job families and when you click on the any job family what you do see are the functions associated in those job families and then you can when you click on the specific function you do see the multiple roles appearing and when you click on the role you can see the details about those roles now let me show you the career progression engine which we have built on top of this our career architecture framework and on top of our career architecture ml engine so this is a very basic demo of the application where you can upload the resume so i have uploaded one resume here and what you do see is the information being extracted from the tight tight uh, disc project description star date and date the company predicted role which they belongs to all these details we have extracted from and mapped them using our career architecture ml engine so for example what you do see the information title coming devops engineer descriptions and the responsibilities being available like this and the start date and end date and the company which we have fed this information to our career architecture ml engine and we have find out okay this this candidate at this particular project belongs to this role under this function software and applications similar kind of information you will see across all those details we have extracted then we are telling then we are telling what can be the next career progression for this individual can individual so it is telling you this candidate can become a can continue devops engineer or the candidate can become automation or orchestration engineer candidate can become associate network engineer candidate can become network engineer candidate can become quality assurance engineer candidate can become software engineers candidate can become data center operation engineer candidate becomes a software architects and probability associated with those moments so the progression happening but if you look at the details what we are recommending is very specific focused details this candidate can move and take vertical progressions and if he take that then he can become software architect if we candidate take horizontal movement then candidate can become software engineer if candidate wants to take the horizontal cross domain then candidate can become a network engineer or candidate can become associate network engineer and if candidate wants to move across other functions then he can become automation and orchestration engineer we also see how much time candidate will take to move to those roles so as you know currently candidate is working on the devops engineer so candidate will not require any much time to move to this role but let's say if the candidate decide to move, wants to move to this role of automation orchestration engineer it will take him one year approximately one year three months to move to this particular role if you wants to see how much time it will take for in candidate to become associate network engineer approximately five months for him to become network engineer one year quality assurance five months software engineer approximately five months 
data center operation engineer for one year. To become software architect, this candidate will take two years, approximately two years. Which shows the information before even employees take action. It shows the transparency and it enable with the enable them with the insights and the right information that how long they have to how long it will take them to move to that particular role with set expectation from that perspective. So that's about career progressions. So these were the capabilities which I wanted to talk about as part of our machine learning engine. But what we are also working towards is we are we are working across the innovation in the data space data space and we are also working on innovation into the deep learning space to make capabilities more smarter and smarter and intelligence at the same time how can we acquire better information with the less data and how can we manage with the less data and how can we improve our system and our ml capabilities with the less and how can we understand those tasks better how can we understand those companies better, environment better, projects better, domain better to give you the more better right candidates at the right time at the right cost and personalized jobs as well. That's how we at AIDS utilizing these AI capabilities to ensure that we that organizations are able to drive significant top and bottom line outcomes in delivering the talent supply chain. We help you put your employees as well as the candidates at the center of the business decisions and making them feel valued, engaged, future ready. Our capabilities and product ensure you get ahead of the competition by making better, smarter talent decisions. And that's how we use tech for good. Reach out to us at info at to explore how you could augment your talent supply chain, talent supply chain outcomes. Thank you.